Circuits. What did my science teacher say about circuits? He said there were two types of circuits, series and parallel. Yes, that's right. It's a parallel circuit and something is wrong. So what is the problem? My science teacher said that when you add bulbs in parallel it doesn't affect the brightness of the bulbs. That's right. But that is not what is happening to my parallel circuit. My science teacher lied. I confess, you were lied to by your science teacher in year 7. So let's have a look at a parallel circuit and see what's really happening when we connect more bulbs in parallel. Here you can see that as I add more bulbs in parallel, they all become dimmer. We know that for a parallel circuit, the potential difference across each branch of the circuit is the same as the potential difference across the battery. So when I add bulbs in parallel and they're getting dimmer, this must mean that the potential difference across the battery is getting smaller as I increase the number of bulbs in parallel. But why? In this video we're going to build a model to represent the way in which we've seen a battery behave and we're going to use two key ideas to do that. One is called electromotive force or EMF and the other is called internal resistance. Okay, if we are going to talk about circuits we need to make sure that we understand all the technical terms. Good idea. What terms? Well we need to know what electromotive force means. Electromumble what? Electromotive force or EMF. It is how we measure the energy transfer in devices like batteries that cause a current to flow. Okay so the EMF measures the energy transfer to the charge carriers in the battery. That's right. The EMF of a battery is the energy transferred to each coulomb of charge as it passes through the battery. So does that mean that EMF is measured in volts? Yes, that's right. I'm going to model the behavior of the cell or battery that we've seen by using two components and imagining these two components are contained inside the cell or battery. And those two components are a source of EMF and a resistor. And here I've got a voltmeter connected across the terminals of my model battery and I can see that the terminal PD is 9 volts and I can show you that that is the same as the EMF that I've got inside. Okay, so now I'm quickly going to build a circuit to see what happens to the terminal PD of my model battery when it's connected in a circuit. Okay, here we can now see that the potential difference across the terms of the battery is now down to 6.65 volts. So we started at 9 volts when it wasn't in the circuit and now that there's a current flowing through it, the potential difference across the terms of the battery is equal to the EMF minus the potential difference across this internal resistance of the battery. So this is what's causing the terminal PD to drop. So let's have a look if we connect this in a parallel circuit. If it's behaving like our real battery then this should drop even further. Okay, here we now have two bulbs in parallel with the cell or battery and the potential difference across the terminals of the battery is now down to 5.28 volts, it's dropped even further. And we can see now that the current flowing to the battery has gone up, so the potential difference 
across the internal resistance is increasing. So we can say that the terminal potential difference is equal to the EMF minus the potential difference across the internal resistance. And this potential difference is equal to the current flowing through the battery times the value of this resistor. Okay, let's have a look at this model of a battery or a cell using the idea of a source of EMF and an internal resistance. So, here is my source of EMF and the internal resistance and in my model those two components are inside the battery or the cell. And I use a little curly E called epsilon to represent the EMF and a little R to represent the value of the resistance. So when we connect this into a circuit, so here's a circuit, and whatever's connected in this circuit we'll say has a total resistance R and the current flowing through the battery and the rest of the circuit is I. If I now measure the potential difference across the terminals of the battery or cell then I get a value which we'll call V where V, the potential, the terminal PD, must equal the EMF minus the potential difference across this resistance. Now I know potential difference V equals I times R, and the current flowing is I, and the resistance is little r, so that must be I times little r there. So the potential difference across the battery equals the EMF minus I times R. So as more current flows, this gets bigger, this stays constant, so this must get smaller. And that's what we've seen happen. So as the current gets bigger, the terminal potential difference gets smaller. We also know that if the potential difference across the terminals of the battery is V, then the potential difference across the total resistance in the circuit is also V. And I know that that V is equal to I times the total resistance in the circuit, and that V and that V are the same. So I can substitute this into this equation. So instead of writing V, I'm going to write I times R equals the EMF minus I times the internal resistance. And I'm just going to rearrange that to get the EMF equals something. So I'm going to get the EMF equals I times R plus R. Okay, so the two equations that you're going to use when you're solving problems about EMF and internal resistance are this one and this one. Okay, so this one tells us the terminal potential difference and how it depends upon the current and the internal resistance. And this one tells us that the EMF equals the current flowing times the total resistance in the circuit, which is the resistance in the main part of the circuit plus the internal resistance. Okay, I think I understand. Can you explain it to me? Yes. To model the behavior of a battery in a circuit, we need to think of it as a box that contains a source of EMF and a resistor. Is that called the internal resistance? Yes. The potential difference across the terminals of the battery is equal to the EMF minus the potential difference across the internal resistance. So that means that as the current through the battery increases the PD across the internal resistance increases so the terminal PD decreases. 
You've got it.